Anto Bite. I want to go there. How about you? I also want to go there. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Sabak Chat. Thanks for joining us. Today, we're talking about the Casino City from Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. A lavish city, rich with opportunity, but where the stakes couldn't be higher. Spoiler alert, we may talk about some things from The Last Jedi that you might not want to hear. And of course, we'll be playing our favorite gambling game, Sabacc. Oh, very fitting. Clearly they play Sabacc at Canto Bites, and clearly we'll be playing Sabacc here today. Good luck, Ken. Let's cheers and play Sabacc. Cheers. You have Alderunian Ale there? No. It's a rare vintage sherry called Amontillado. Okay, mm. then. I'm, I'm drinking it as a tribute to Canto Bite. Hmm. Well, I'm feeling pretty good about this game. You know, it doesn't surprise me that we don't see much of the game sit back up close in The Last Jedi. A couple reasons. Number one, Disney isn't going to glorify gambling for children. The city of Canto Bite, while glamorous, is also kind of an unfriendly place. It's a casino and kids are watching. There's a sinister kind of feel. I mean, kind of like Eyes Wide Shut meets the Atlantic City Boardwalk. That's how I describe it. Eyes Wide Shut? The Atlantic City Boardwalk? Th yeah. Those aren't things for children. Call 10. Yeah, you have these weird rich eccentrics who are clearly enjoying themselves, but Finn and Rose are out of their element there, outsiders. Like Tom Cruise's character. Who knows how evil some of these people are? It serves as a warning for children. Gambling is wrong. It might be glamorous on the outside. The outside of the casino looks like a brutalist compound. And on the inside, I don't know if you noticed, the low arches? Kind of reminds me of a sinister underground catacomb. And look at that. A shift right off the bat. Kind of reminds me of, like, the wine cellar in the cask of a Montalato. That's a short story by Edgar Allan Poe. Oh, really? Yeah, basically this dude, Bib Fortunata, he uh, he goes to the local carnival dressed up as Harvey Quinn, looking like, uh, um, well, not not Salacious Crumb like in our deck, but the, the poker, the do joker in a regular oh, poker deck. the joker. Yeah. Anyway, this dude gets tanked. <laughs> he just gets wasted. And his friend Montressor, he says, hey, Fortunata, follow me down here. And Fortunata follows him into the catacombs of this wine cellar with the promise that there's a keg full of a amontillado down here. That's this liquor. Okay. So Fortunata's like, great. And they walk deep, deep into this tunnel in the cellar. Finally, Montresor, who had been harboring a grudge against him and planning his murder, chains Fortunata to the wall at the end of the tunnel and lays bricks, bricking him in alive. Wow. Then he, he calls to him from behind the bricks, Fortunata, how you doing back there? Fortunato. And all he gets in response is the dangling of the bells on his, you know, his long things. Like who? His, no, no, like a jester's hat. His, his like who? I stand. He's a toilet, right? No, he's a man, a human being, man from Italy. This was written in the 1840s. No shift. <laughs> oh, I thought you said Bib Fortunata. I said Fortunata. Uh, check. Whatever. I mean, if I said Bib Fortunata, what I meant was Fortunata. I don't know. It's unfortunate. I think it's an Italian word. That's what it means. He gets bricked and alive? Well, that's not too fortunate. 100? Uh, well, neither was Bib for Fortuna. He wasn't too fortunate. He was a weak-minded fool. And so that reminds you of Canto Bite? Which isn't that they're reveling, but actually rivaling. Stand. Not all is what it seems on the surface. So that's a good warning for kids against gambling. Okay, cool. I hope you enjoy your Amontanendo. Mm, disgusting. <laughs> okay. I think the reason there's no close-ups to back is we have the Han Solo movie coming out, which should definitely have Sabacc in it. Because, as we all know, Han wins the Millennium Falcon from Lando in a Sabacc game. And it seems like they're paying attention to balancing out the content of these movies. I agree, they are balancing the content. 200? For example, 
Episode 8 is very force centric. Right. Ray is trained in the way of the force. Luke has new ideas about the force. They're reinventing the force and so on, whereas the Han Solo movie may have zero force in it. Remember, Han says. Kid, I've flown from one side of this galaxy to the other. I've seen a lot of strange stuff, but I've never seen anything to make me believe there's one all-powerful force controlling everything. There's no mystical energy field that controls my destiny. It's all a lot of simple tricks and nonsense. So since The Last Jedi has minimal sabacc, the Han Solo movie can have lots of sabacc. Stand? You never know. I mean, if that quote from Han is indication of what we'll see in the Han Solo movie, then we should see a lot of, quote, strange stuff, right? That includes the back. And as Han said, simple tricks and nonsense. That also includes the back. Han must be referring to the back there in that scene. No. Check. Uh, so, there you go. Sabak is mentioned in A New Hope. No. Indirectly, no, but no, still. No, 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 no. Yes, simple tricks. Han cheated at Sabacc to win the Falcon. What's simpler than a card trick? It's not personal. 350? Who are you talking to? I'm you're looking over there. I'm playing in a bet of 350. It looks like you're talking to somebody else. Well, I'm, I'm talking to whoever is accepting my bid. Just putting it on the record. No dealer here. There are dealers of all sort at Canto Bite, but unfortunately not on Sabacc, Jay. Hmm. You know, I always thought Han meant flying tricks when he said simple tricks and nonsense. Like a barrel roll. He's a pilot. He's not paying the bills with a barrel roll. Call 350. A simple card trick is what earned him the Falcon and by extension his reputation and his living. It earned him the very ship they're sitting on when he tells them of his experience. Simple card trick. No match for a good blaster at your side. He's talking about shooting Greedo, the old blaster under the table trick. You misdirect the guy's attention, misdirection is a staple of magic, right. and then pulls the trigger from under the table. Han pulls it off perfectly by touching the crack in the katina wall. Mm. That would have been fresh on his mind and most likely what he's referring to, if anything in particular, in that scene. Check. Well, actually, that was no trick. It was self-defense. According to the special edition, Han was just ready and waiting, should the need to return fire arise. Uh, let's not get into that. We're yeah. here to talk about Canto Bite. 360. Call. So we've established that Sabacc is a major part in the Han Solo movie, right. which is why it's a minor part in Episode Eight. Or will they change the way Han wins the Falcon to Dejarik? Right, because why waste an opportunity to call uh. back to the original? Well, according to you, Sabak is mentioned in the original. <laughs> so they are calling back. Yeah, that's true. I stand. Well, I don't think they'll change it to Dejuric. I might have agreed with you, but for the fact that they already called back Dejuric in Rogue One. The callback has been used up. Stan. Good point. So you're happy with your hand? I'm very you happy with to... my hand. You don't want to add a card? No. The cards you're holding are satisfactory to you? I'm just... I'm not buying it, Frank. I am very happy with my hands. Mm. Well, what did you want to see anyway? Finn holding cards, check raisin, pocket cams in the middle of a Star Wars film? Oh, I guess you haven't seen the deleted scene from The Force Awakens of Finn playing poker badly. Mm, no. What? Here, take a look. You're picking up on so many different things. Okay, why is he shuffling these fingers like that? Okay, why is he playing 5,000 right now? Why is he betting? Why did he pull on that one? What's, what's going on? I was bluffing for way too long and I had no cards. And I just want to play. It was a leap of faith. John calls the all-in. Full house for Neymar. We still have chips. We still have chips. We still have chips. We still have chips. No, no. That's actually John Boyega playing poker badly. Nobody plays poker in The Force Awakens, badly or well. Especially since, why would they include that in the plot? I mean, Finn and Rose are on a mission there, not a vacation. Well, Finn is an ex-stormtrooper, and here we are. Maybe he enjoys it. He's got the First Order looking for him. He's, he's got everybody looking for him. It's not time for leisure. Plus, it wouldn't serve the plot at all. Maybe it's a Casino Royale situation. 
The Resistance has thwarted Snoke's attempt to blow up the starship, and so in an, an attempt to cover losses, Snoke sets up a high-stakes Sabacc tournament. Finn agrees to play and win, so Snoke will have to call asylum at the Resistance Embassy. 400. Right, well, I mean, Ryan Johnson did say of Canto Bite that it's a little James Bond, a little to catch a thief. Exactly. So. Casino Royale was part of the inspiration. Yeah. I can see that playing Sabacc at Cantabite is a fancy experience. Not like at old Joe's Pit Stop in the episode Idiots Array from Rebels Season 1. Zeb and Lando play Sabacc in a shady room on a bare metal table, remember? Yeah. Lando wins Chopper with an yeah. Idiots Array. Yeah, I, I remember that fondly. Lando is good. Mm. He's, he's, he's very good. Well, I call that luck. I call 400. Okay. <coughs> Why didn't they have a droid dealer to ship the Sabacc cards in any of these depictions? That's my question. That's the traditional way Sabacc cards are shifted. It is? Yeah, didn't you know that? There was no droid shifting them in Rebel Dawn, part three of the Han Solo trilogy. Non-canon alert. But... They, they had a randomizer that transmitted electrical impulses and shifted the cards. Why would you need a whole droid just to shift cards? Well, non canon alert. I stand. They don't just shift cards, Ken. Droid dealers stop cheaters using high speed photoreceptors. And as a bonus, they do not accept tips and they translate. Yep. I mean, there's an old saying that goes to play poker, all you need is a chip and a chair. To play Sabacc, all you need is a chip, a chair and a robot fluent in over six million forms of communication. Or a good solid pair of dice. Double five, Sabacc oh shifts. Oh my god. Oh man. You know, I think I prefer old Joe's pit stop to Canto Bite. A dank really? and smoky gambling environment, that's more my speed. Like okay. this. At Canto Bite, they're all well dressed. I know right. if I walked into Canto Bite with my Stormtrooper helmet and a t-shirt, Everyone would turn and stare at me. Well, why, why would you prefer a hole in the wall to a luxury resort? Who cares, man? I mean, whenever I go to gamble, I want to be treated like royalty. I want luxury and lush waterfalls. And whenever I go to gamble, whenever you go to gamble, you want lush waterfalls? Is that what you just said? Yeah, yeah like like prestigious decor. I mean, I'm giving them my money. I should at least get an experience out of it. Dazzling lights, that kind of thing. No, no, not me at all. Yeah. I want a dimly lit lounge where no one can see me or what I'm up to, how much I'm betting. I mean, presumably you'd want the dealer to see how much you're betting. Maybe. I would, I would cause significant confusion <laughs> if it was so dim that... Uh, Maybe that's why droids would come in handy. They don't need to see. It's all registered electronically. Hmm. So you can play in the pitch black if you want. Yeah. I check. I'm here to make money, not spend it on waterfalls. Canto Bite is definitely not dim. Even though it does have its dark side, per se, the name itself seems to suggest candle and bright. It's like Las Vegas. Check. You know, I kind of find it troubling, actually. We have all these unanswered questions, like, how did the map to Luke come to be? Why did Ray's parents abandon her? Right. And so on. Answer? We're going to Vegas! Yeah! <laughs> okay. Uh, Alderaan. Uh, I think some unanswered questions require careful, complex answers. Like, how did Maz Kanata get her hands on Luke's lightsaber? Right. Luke's story between episodes 6 and 7. I'd like to get to as many of them as possible. Ken, you're worrying too much. Here, have a sip of my amontillado. Uh, that stuff's gross. Come on. I've got this helmet on and I can't. I can't do it. Okay, so I, Aldrand, what are you going to do? Uh, I think I'm going to try my Hail Mary pass here. 14. Ooh. 17. Uh, ouch. Did you know you're allowed to have your cat with you at the craps table at Canto Bite? I've never been allowed to do that, and believe me, I've tried. Oh, I've yeah. tried. Hmm. I guess that's one of the great things about Canto Bite. You have all these individuals of all shapes and sizes, 
with cats, without cats, black, white, tall, short, as long as you've got credits. Shuffle real good. Okay. Anyway, I guess what I wanted to see was something like in 3,000 Miles to Graceland. Ever seen it? No. Well, it's in my top 10 <clears throat> casino movies of all time. These guys dress up and try to rob a casino. <laughs> Snoke could use an Elvis wig. Maybe Luke and Snoke could settle their differences at the sabac table. Maybe. I'd say the odds of seeing that are 3,720 to 1. Seeing it? Well, I mean, on that subject, uh, this was keeping me up last night. Who do you think would win between Snoke and Luke Skywalker in Sabacc? Well, it depends on who gets the better cards. Let's make it 50. Are Jedi mind tricks allowed? No. Well, I only ask because if Jedi mind tricks are allowed, the Jedi could get rich, rich, rich at the casinos. Casinos are full of weak-minded fools. The casino staff would catch on to what they're doing and kick them out. Would they, though? It's a discreet corner of the table, playing heads up like you and me. Okay. And the Jedi is very quiet. You will fold your hand. I will fold my hand. It's suspicious. Bet 150? Anyway, Jedi don't want to get rich. That's 100% a dark side move. Sith don't use mind tricks as often as Jedi, but that's probably because they're too emotional. We saw Kylo Ren, a dark side user, use mind tricks against Poe mm -hmm. and also Rey. Yeah. But Sith are generally too focused on their own energies, passions, and emotions. As you can tell from Obi-Wan Kenobi's demeanor, it helps to be cool and collected and generally emotion-free to use good mind tricks effectively. Obi-Wan is very even-tempered and a great Taoist. And he was a good friend. But back to my question, Luke versus Snoke at Sabacc. I'm thinking Luke would have the better poker face, being a trained Taoist. But that doesn't necessarily mean he would win. Well, Luke is honest. Yeah. And you'd have to be a bit deceitful in Sabacc. However, the more sad, cynical Luke we see in The Last Jedi, it might be unreadable enough to pull off some good bluffs. Mm. I certainly wouldn't want to go up against him in Sabacc because he's more or less a wild card. You, on the other hand, I can tell you've got a terrible hand. <laughs> really? Well, what do I have, Ken? Let's let the viewer decide. Well, you're over 23 and hoping I don't alder on you. I know that. You're sitting about 25, 26. Oh, well, let's let the viewer decide. I'll, I'll just say uh, you couldn't be more wrong. It's a low bomb out anyway. Between 24 and 26. Nope. Maybe 27. Uh, no. No. You know, you don't have to be unreadable to win at Sabacc. You say Luke is a wild card and that would give him an advantage over Snoke, but... You know, it's often just what cards come your way. How does your strategy match what cards you get? What's going to come out of that deck? 250? Um, how am I supposed to know what's going to come out of the deck in this hypothetical scenario? Who do you think would get better cards of Luke and Snoke? It's random. It's random when they play it, yes. You can take this one, by the way. Okay. Thank you. But... Who hypothetically would get better cards? But it, it makes no sense. If I had to pick, and it, it makes no sense at all to pick. Hypothetically. If I had to pick, I guess Luke? Disagree. I think Snoke would get the better cards. And this is because apparently Snoke, bit of a spoiler here, Snoke is covered, covered, covered in spoiler bling but yeah i think he gets the better cards but my money's on luke winning the game because snoke's confidence will get the better of him you know how when you've amassed a huge stack and you feel untouchable you know we've all been there mm -hmm. you start to play fast and loose that would be his downfall thinking he's invincible yeah yeah i've been there trying to cheat death but betting on what kind of cards they get if they're playing fairly, it's exactly even. It's no. it's random. I'm not so sure about that. Snoke has a ton of bling. What? How does if he has bling or not affect what cards he draws? It doesn't make any sense. He's gonna 
bet all his chips. The writers would probably want him to bomb out so that the game could have a happy ending. Well, you know, if anyone would bet all his chips, it would be Luke. Actually, make it 150. Okay. Luke is traditionally the underdog hero with nothing but a hope and a prayer. Fold. 23. Remember the shot that destroyed the first Death Star? Yep. The other pilots thought it was impossible. That's impossible, even for a computer. So, Luke would be all in while Snoke would keep reserves. I don't think the writers would want that. Snoke is blinged out, and he's spending his dough. Writers? What writers? Oh, I forgot our... I didn't know this scenario was taking place in some kind of written environment. Of course it's a written environment. Did you ever see Snoke walking down the street in real life? Uh, maybe. How, how would they exist if it wasn't for writers? Everything in Star Wars is written. No, what? not everything. What isn't? In The Empire Strikes Back, when Han says, I know, before being frozen in carbonate, that's not a scripted line. Yes, but if it was a scripted line, George Lucas would have had him go, I... No! <laughs> no, no, no. No, George Lucas had him, had him <laughs> yeah. say, when he's being lowered into the carbonite, yeah. he would yell out, No! <laughs> that was, yeah, that was, that was my joke. Uh, I just wanted to get in on it. You're blind. You're blind oh, buddy. sorry about that. Han would get bad cards, I figure, but... He would win by bluffing. See? Gambling has its place at the heart of Star Wars. Being a smuggler is a huge gamble in itself. You risk getting caught, but Han plays by sense of feel. The possibility of successfully navigating an asteroid field is approximately 3,720 to 1. Never tell me the odds. The guy doesn't even want to know the odds. Wow. Because what's the point? He's going off intuition. Yeah, he really lives the gambler's lifestyle. Yeah, he does. He's not afraid to take risk, like Alderaaning with 17. That's risky. I, I Alderaan at 17 quite often. Huh. No shift. Or taking strangers to Alderaan who need a lift. Being a pilot for hire in a seedy bar in Mos Eisley is certainly risky, right? You know how some places yeah, don't frown absolutely. on droids in their establishments? Hey, we don't serve their kind here. What? Your droids. They'll have to wait outside. outside. We don't want them here. Is that because they're against gambling in those establishments? They don't want droid dealers, the symbol of Sabak around, reminding the patrons of their bad habit? Sabak, it just causes trouble. Bringing in droids gives them the itch. I haven't heard that one. I've heard a few, but uh, I thought it was because they don't drink. Droids don't drink, so they're bad customers. They just take up space. And I think that's actually confirmed in the novel just came out recently from a certain point of view. I think Wurr doesn't like them because they're bad customers. How much how much is that? Let's see, three three seventy-five. Okay, hold on a second. What about Bender? You know Bender? Bender the robot? The robot. Would, would you tell him to wait outside? No. You'd be throwing away a fortune here. Don't be a fool. I wouldn't I would not tell Bender to wait outside, but at my establishment, gambling would not be illegal. It would be allowed for sure. Well, me too. I would have gambling allowed. Anyway, good game. Get your resume into Cantabite. Me? Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll do that. That was an epic first hand. Yeah, that was. By the way, if you like our program, don't forget to like us and make a comment below, please. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Friend, I'm